Okay. As I say, welcome. A welcome to the Diana Wright Show live. And we welcome you from around the world and in the United States. And thank you so much for joining us today. It is Monday. It's a start of a new week and new beginnings and new blessings and new traumas and new problems and new everything in one. But I choose to go with the blessings because if you don't, then you are in big trouble. And as I listen to T.D. Jakes this morning, as I always do before I get to this program, I wonder, as he spoke about the actors that are in church. He says everyone in church is an actor. And if the movie industry, say Warner Brothers or one of those would wanna come, they will find their best actors in the church. Incredible thought. And as he spoke about Jacob, who ended up alone anyway, despite all the people that he had around him and the children he had and all those wonderful things and the concubines and everything else, he still ended up alone. And he spoke about good hurt and bad hurt. He focused on the good hurt because sometimes you can be hurt but you can still come out smelling great at the end. Because, you know, he wanted us to be sure that we can look in the mirror and say, check your people off your list that hurt you and you want to get rid of them. And sometimes you'll end up with a list with just you and God alone. And it's good to be alone with God sometimes. Because sometimes you do have a chance to speak with God, to have a conversation with God, and to get answers from God. He also spoke about the prophets who like to tell you that they had a word from God for you. Mm, I'm not so sure he's trusting in that himself, just by the way he said it. Should you believe when a prophet prophesies in your life? Or should you want to wait until God speaks to you himself? Hmm. Sometimes you simply need to be alone. There are lots of people I find that don't like their own company. But I, be I truly believe that that's a lack of self-love and not loving who you are. So you need to have someone always around to validate you or make you feel special. I was asked the other day if I could live in a house by myself. And I said, sure, why not? A four bedroom house by yourself? Of course, why not? Won't you get lonely? But sometimes you live with others and you are indeed lonely and feel alone. So as I thrust and I use the program, this program, because it is my intention to help you. And I, along with that, to help myself in loving yourself. Because that's truly the most important thing that only you and you alone are in control of and able to do. And I want to reach out to people who are overweight today and those who are skinny. Because the people who you think are skinny, they have their own demons about weight just the way you do. Because the person who is overweight is telling themselves, and you truly should love yourself, whether you're fat to skinny or in between. That, let's just get that out on the table. But the people who are overweight are basically trying to say and convince you, oh, I don't eat that much, you know. Or they will say, variety is a spice of life, you know. Or they'll say, I'm not that fat. Indeed, if you're fat, you're just fat. And indeed, if you're skinny, you're just too skinny. 
and the demons that go through the head of a skinny person who is trying to maintain their weight at X? Because sometimes when your weight is at X, your weight becomes an issue for you anyway. Because you don't want to get beyond that X that you're at. Even though people are telling you how wonderful you look at X weight, you can only realize by yourself what weight is comfortable for you. So as I talk about weight today, I also talk about loving yourself and I also talk about being with yourself. Wanting to be sometimes alone just to reflect and think and have a conversation with God. Because sometimes, even though you will have a lot of people around you, only God knows what's in your heart. Because what's in your heart can be simply, God, why am I here? I am so alone. I am lonely. But those words you cannot say aloud, you see. You say them to yourself, but only God knows because he knows what you're thinking. He knows your heart. And I guess that's the reason why T.D. Jakes found it necessary to preach about the actors and actresses. Well, he said just actors, period, in church. Because when you go to church, there are people there who don't like sister so-and-so and who hate sister so-and-so and who wants to be the pastor's favorite so-and-so. And who the pastor favors so and so. And you, you're in a house of hypocrites, if you want to call it that. Or you're in a house that people refer to as hospitals. Or you're in a house like I refer to them as racist houses every Sunday or every Saturday. Because we get into our houses or different places of worship. And most of the times, we only see people who look like us in those places of worship. And as I segue into the fact that the Boston bomber who was killed can find no one who wants to preside over his burial or his funeral, whatever word you want to place. And I do wonder about forgiveness. Can we forgive the Boston bombers who bombed all those innocent people? Or is forgiveness reserved for people who don't do something so evil? What is forgiveness anyway? I need to have a pastor comes on that can come on and address these issues. Because the Imam, what was his name? Imam Rahim, who is a Muslim preacher, if you will. <laughs> he says he will not preside over the burial service of this young man who killed and maimed all those people. Some of them are still in the hospital. He's concerned only about the victims. His suggestion is that the young man be taken back to Chechnya, Russia, or wherever he came from. His words, because the brother, I'm told, is from Chechnya. He should go back there. His family is the, are the ones who should be concerned about his burial. No one else should be. But my question to you today is, should we be, should someone step up, whether Muslim or not, to bury the young man? He's already dead. And now, no, no, he cannot be raised from that dead to come and serve the time that he probably needs to serve to suffer the pain that we would want him to suffer. 
so he's dead. His mother and father are overseas in Russia or Chechnya or wherever they live. His uncle incognito went to claim the body, the same uncle that called them losers when the incident occurred and it was all fresh in everyone's mind. So I truly wonder, is this the right thing to be doing by everyone saying they don't want him to come to their burial site? No one wants to preside over the burial? Initially, no funeral home even wanted to take the body. Are we doing the right thing in the eyes of God? That's my question. How do you feel about this? Do you feel that because someone killed someone else or did something evil to kill other people and, you know, injure other people that will now have miserable lives, if you ask me, or lives that they truly have to adjust to? Because how do you go from having two legs to having none? Or having two legs and then have one? Or an arm that's gone or, you know, mostly lower extremities that were injured, I'm told. H how do we settle this? And how do we move on from this? Some people are saying that they should throw him into the sea like they did Osama bin Laden, beside him in particular. How do we settle these things? I truly believe that only God can settle it. Or give a word or some sign to someone who is of a higher worship level than maybe I am who can actually go up in glory and speak to God. So how do we actually settle this? Oh, it would be so good if I was actually on radio right now and there's a preacher listening that could come on and call in and settle this because I find it unsettling to see the fervor over just burying this young man, evil as he might be. The cruel things that he did, premeditated, no doubt, it seems. But who do we choose to forgive? A wife that cheated on you? A children that disappoint you? Husband that cheated on you? A young woman that has sex with a man for the first time who pursued her and all he did was give her AIDS? How do we settle these things in our hearts? And how do we move forward from them and find peace? And I truly believe that you find peace only within yourself because you cannot take on everybody else's problem. You can barely manage your children and your husband's problem or your wife and your children's problem, whatever it is. Sometimes you have friend problems because some, some friends become burdens. Some friends, you don't know what to do with them. Some friends consistently disappoint you. Some friends you love deeply, some friends you act with. Are the people that we go to church with supposed to be our friends? I don't think so. Should I be having them over to my house? I don't think so. There were ones that I would choose to get intimate with. And that doesn't mean sex now. We're talking intimate in terms of friendship. And those people are special, so you invite them over. But then everybody else gets jealous because they're not invited. So how do we settle this whole thing, this church thing? 
And every time you talk to someone or you meet someone and you mention that you had gone to church and you're not going right now, they tell you that they, their church is so much better. Are there good churches and bad churches? Like there is good hurt and bad hurt? Because some hurt you can learn from. But are you ever so deep in your own tragedy, in your own mire, that you feel like you want to give up? That you want to X out all the friends from your list? Especially the ones who dumped you while you were going through your struggles and your tragedy and your devastation. But yet before, they were the ones who were calling you on the phone and giving you, unloading their problems in your ears. But now they have no time for yours because they ask you, what can I say? I don't know what to say. How do we settle all these issues in our lives? And how do we settle the fact that some people have so much and some people have so little and some people have nothing? And how do we settle, is this a fair God? Is the God that we read about in the Bible making us suffer, causing us pain? And then, of course, because he gets the glory at the end. When he brings you through all that tragedy and devastation, he gets the glory. But how do we explain one person having so much money, food, and everything else? And there's a little guy on the street corner or under the bridge who's sleeping on the cardboard box. How do we explain that? And which way do we choose to go when we think of the young man who, the Boston bomber, who hurt so many people? Should he be buried? Should he have a fair place to want to bury him there? Should there be a preacher who would step up and say, I will do this? There's one imam I gather in Boston that promised and wanted to do this, but of course, he will get backlash. He will be whipped for this. So who do you choose to forgive in your life today? Did you open your box of blessings this morning that I choose to ask you to get physically? Or if you don't get it physically, you can actually imagine this. A purple box or a gold box. Whichever one you choose and you can choose too. Because if you choose two, you will just get an abundance of blessings. Did you open your box and did you tell yourself this morning that I love me? Whether I'm fat, whether I have a big nose, or dark brown eyes or dark black eyes and they're not green and blue and brown light? Did you tell yourself that you love yourself today? Who are you fooling? And who are you acting and pretending with? One of my big things, for me anyway, is what you see is what you get. I will tell you how I feel and you can go and digest it and choose to understand that it was not coming from a place of malice or hurt. It was just trying to give you another perspective on what you just did to me or to someone else. Who do you choose to forgive? So who are we choosing to forgive now? So is this young man not going to be buried ever? I don't know. Maybe you know. Maybe someone out there can get a word from God as to the right thing to do. What is the right thing to do in this process? Maybe his family, well, I guess Muslims don't believe in cremation. I don't either, and I'm not a Muslim. Because I don't want anybody burning my body. No, thank you. So, should his body be shipped back to his parents... For them to bury him. Maybe that's the best solution. 
But who will play, pay for the body to go back there? Will it be his uncle? Will it be some unidentified person? And why his uncle, I guess, is embarrassed because, you know, this kind of brings shame on the family. And for the mother who is living in denial, I'm sure she's pondering in her quiet moments, how could I have birthed two demons, two devils that would do something to hurt so many people? And not hurt, only hurt the people who are physically hurt or dead, but create an insecurity in all Bostonians. Because now you wonder, does everyone who have a backpack, are they carrying a bomb or are they guilty or how do you test that? And every event you go to where there are lots of people and you see someone with a backpack, it doesn't have to be Boston, it could be anywhere. How do you receive that? How do you receive all the bad things that are happening in this world? Well, I do believe that we, cho we should choose to focus on the positives. Because if we focus on the negatives, we stay in a rut. And we might just be sinking and drowning in that quicksand. So I'm here to say to you, it doesn't matter where you are today. It doesn't matter what annoyed you this morning or yesterday or last night and you're still carrying it over. Just choose to speak to the people who are part of what you're feeling. Like I do. I say, look, I am pissed off about what is going on right about now. And it has nothing to do with you. I'm just ticked off because I don't think I should be going through what I'm going through with this product or this person at this particular time. So you say it and you get past it. But a lot of us choose to pretend and act like we are loved more than anyone else. Like we can do no wrong. Like we carry nothing in our hearts that is not supposed to be there. That's hypocritical. Because we all feel hurt. We all feel pain. We are all ticked off at some point about something. It's just the journey that we choose Beyond that, that's important. So I'm choosing to say that someone needs to preside over the burial of this young man. Or some people like his uncle and his sisters and his family members here need to fly the body back so he can indeed have a burial. Because I'm sure no matter where he's buried here, no one will be satisfied. I'm not even sure that Chech... The people in Chechnya will want him there, but they can't refuse him. That's where he was born. So the family members who are out there, who are in the U.S., need to get their act together and go forth, get his body a resting place. And I'm not sure I even agree with his wife to not want to have anything to do with the body. That's the father of her child. And at some point, she's going to have to explain to that child what their father did. Allegedly so, even though we've seen all the videos and all that. And we've gotten his brother's words. So I'm not even agreeing with her that she should have just, you know, walked away from the body. Did he not kind of rough her up before they actually got married? And that's the thing with us women, you see. We think we can change guys, but we really can't. A person is who they are from their about four year, years old, if not before. It's very unlikely that people change. So if a man kind of slaps you up before the wedding, I would say forget about the wedding because the slapping will continue after the wedding. And if you're emotionally abused prior to your wedding, I would suggest that you scrap the wedding too. 
emotionally, verbally, psychologically, physically. Let us stop pretending about who we are and who what life is. And when you're ticked off about something, a lot of people are not going to like what you say. But hey, just go for it. Once again, welcome to my viewers from around the world and in the United States. We thank you so much for joining the Diana Wright Show live. This is Diana Wright. Yes, I'm sure you know by now. And we like for you to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And we would also want you to remember and put it on your calendar for next year because next year is just around the corner just in case you think it's far away. April 30th is I Love Me Day and my intention is to make it bigger than Valentine's Day because if you can be looking and taking care of your Valentine, you need to take care of you. So the only way you need to take care of you is by loving you first. There's Mother's Day, there's Father's Day, there's Valentine's Day. Is there Grandmother's Day too, I think? So now there's I Love Me Day. And that day is your day. How are you feeling about yourself today? Despite all the things that might have happened over the weekend. Are you loving yourself still? Did you open your box of blessings? Because every single day, there is some little thing, I don't care how small it is, that is a blessing in your life. The fact that you woke up this morning is a blessing. So, I encourage you to go to my web store and buy my t-shirts, but I'm not a trying to infomercial you to buy shirts or infomercial you to be detoxed through Rad Wellness. I am here to say to you, this is the journey that I choose to take. It's a great journey. Join me on the journey of loving yourself. Join me on the journey, whether you're big and fat or you're skinny or you're in between, to do a detox of your body because it's good for you. Wellness is part of what we try to do on this show. Loving yourself, giving you information, trying to make you the best you that you can be. And trying to help those who are authors who want their books to be discussed and raise young people up when they're doing great things. So I truly want to know today, who are you choosing to forgive in your life? And where do you fit in all of this? How are you thinking about the fact that imagine you being dead and no one wants to bury you? And no one wants you in their burial plots. And no one wants to preside over your funeral. Just think about that. Think about those young women who died in that limousine in California over the weekend. They were going out to have fun. Did they think that that would be their last journey? No. So that's the reason you should live in the moment, in the now, as there's a book that says that. Appreciate the small things in your life and be about your family. Loving them, taking care of them, and hoping they take care of you too. And it's not a one-sided thing, because I'm big on that, you know. I don't want to be the one always giving, and no one is doing anything for me. <laughs> I am a receiver. George W. said he's a decider. Well, I'm a receiver. I love to receive love and blessings. Not just from God, but from people. And you should choose to have peace and not war in your lives. It's amazing to sit down and wonder if some people just go to bed thinking, how can I hurt someone or rob someone tomorrow? That's difficult for me to grapple with or to wrap my head around. So, 
The church is filled with actors. T.D. Jakes says that. But he also says that there can be good hurt and bad hurt. And sometimes each and every one of us need to be alone. Just alone with your own company. And you can hear the voice of God more clearly. And always listen to that small voice that's way down here. I call it your spirit that speaks to you. And if you hear it clearly, it will lead you to the right path. So I choose to move to Wayne Lapierre and the NRA. And Mr. Lapierre actually wants each and every one of us to be armed because he believed that all those Bostonians would have felt much better with a 45 or whatever you call them guns and them big old guns and Rick Perry they're showing him with this gun that looks like it should be in the military he should not even have it in his hands wow what a country what a place what a people so Wayne Lapierre wants everyone to have a gun no thank you sir I don't want one And when someone is actually robbing you or breaking down your door, are you going to have time to go to the safety lock, cupboard, closet, to wherever you keep the gun to get the gun to fight back with the person? I wonder if Mr. Lapierre thought about that. And they keep talking about, oh, good gun owners. I don't think you need a big old gun to shoot some birds or who, whatever you all are shooting out there. Do you actually need an automatic weapon that will go to shoot birds? Well, maybe you do. I don't want to find out. Because I'm about love and peace, joy and happiness, not about war and killing birds and killing people. And Wayne Lapierre, he just needs to shut up and go home. Because the things he says to me, it just sounds like a crazy man. One minute he's for background checks, universal background checks. And a couple years later, he's on tape saying it. And then he goes, oh no, I misspoke. I don't want that to happen. 70,000 strong NRA members they good people nothing wrong with that but why do they want to arm everyone and oh the other side of the argument is that all the people who use guns to hurt other people from Sandy Hook to whatever they actually got it from a person who got the gun legally or, you know, straw away or whatever, where, you know, a good citizen buys a gun for someone who can't buy one and all that kind of stuff. And have they forgotten the guy from Al Qaeda who is on the internet telling everyone around the world that it's easy to buy a gun in the United States? All you got to do is turn up at a gun show and bring your money. So who are those guns going to kill, Mr. Lapierre? And I always say, no one is worried about anything until the fire is burning down their own house. So if, for example, Mr. Wayne Lapierre is being robbed or his house is being broken into and he has his guns locked up in a nice case, is he going to be able to get to those guns before the robbers get into him? I'd like to know that because you see, I think when you get older, Mr. Lapierre, your reflexes are a little slower. For some people, it might still be the same, but majority of people do slow down a bit. Or if his family member gets killed with a gun, would he then not want to vote or not want his bought senators and congress people to vote for a bill that simply asks for universal background check 
I guess there's some form of it already because if you go to buy a gun, you have to write your name down and all that kind of stuff. And why does everyone believe that the government is going to come to your house to get your guns? The government can't even run the government right now. I don't see how they'll find time to come to your house for a gun because Congress is doing such a lousy job. I don't think they can know what's going on in your house. I don't care how many cameras they put up or whatever. They're not going to come to your house to take your gun. They can't even run Washington. How are they going to find time to come to your house? How do they do that? Just think about it, people. No one is trying to take your gun away. And if we're trying to, all those people, the Republicans that are trying to not do the right thing because they hate the black man in the White House, how does that work? That's not supposed to be the right thing. So as Americans, how do we realize or condone that? And, and my campaign here also, apart from I Love Me, April 30th, is for people to keep their vote to themselves until politicians decide they're going to go there to do the job and not try to figure out how they're going to raise enough money for the next election. Can somebody do some work in Washington, please? Oh, yes, they're doing little things like, you know, today they're voting on the fact that whether you should pay taxes or not pay taxes if you purchase something on the Internet. And who it's going to hurt, whether it's going to hurt small business or whatever. But most of the small businesses and the big businesses have Internet connections that you can buy from. So... You know, how, how how crucial is that? Oh, immigration, they're stalling on, don't you see? And I am here to tell you that I have no hopes for that immigration bill. You're supposed to have hope for everything, but the way these guys are behaving and the way they are trying to cut Obama at his legs off, maybe they'll just say, okay, even though we know that immigration bill is a good thing and you know, the Heritage Foundation is coming out today talking about, oh, it's going to cost how many trillions of dollars for this amnesty thing that we're thinking about. Because, you know, once they become citizens, you have to provide health care and this, that for them. And, oh, my goodness gracious me, hate, hate every day. So is immigration going to be passed or it's going to be the next killed one, just like the gun bill? Well, some people are saying that, you know, President Obama and the vice president should not have done it the way they did it. They should have waited for the bill to be done on Mother's Day this weekend because you could have a one million march of women on Washington. Hello. Are we supposed to be going to extremes to have Republicans do the right thing and do their jobs? Is that what we're supposed to be doing? think so. I think if you have a job, just like you and I, if we go out and we find a job, if I go to work at NBC or CBS, I better not be talking about I don't feel like doing anything today or I feel like filibustering today like Mr. Rand Ball. H how do you do that? If we as Americans were doing the things that they're doing in Washington as congressmen and women and Tea Partiers and Democrats and whatever, we would be fired. How do you fire these people? Is what I want to know. Because a lot of them are not coming up for re-election for another five years or so. Ted Cruz, Mr. Roller Coaster who comes in, tries to make a name for himself, so he decides to belittle everyone and crush everyone's character because his name will be found and held up because he is Ted Cruz from Texas where we do things big in Texas you see and Mr. Sanford in Carolina and we're just thinking about all this there's a New York Times article that's talking about how we can let men get away with sexual escapades and bad things because they are boys. But if a woman 
chose to be sexual and oversexed, then she doesn't have a chance of a comeback. And I heard someone putting like Hillary in Bill's place and Sanford's wife in his place and, you know, various people. Would they be able to come back? Amanda Knox is busy explaining her sexcapades in Italy, as the article speaks about. But for her, I have a different attitude with Amanda Knox because I think that Amanda Knox had a great opportunity to go to Italy to learn a new culture, to learn a new language, which she did learn because she's fluent in Italian. And I think her parents must have sacrificed something for her to go to Italy. But instead of going to Italy and focusing on what she's there for, hence she take the wrong turn and the wrong route and boom, it blows up in her face. And she ends up in prison. And it's the same thing here when parents choose to send their children away to college. A lot of them go there and they're at bars drinking. They're at parties partying. You hear the young bomber from Boston. He was a party planner almost. He was at every party. Shouldn't he be going to school and going to study? Is that what? And parents make these sacrifices to tell, send these children away to college. And they have no monitoring. Just as a movie I watched over the weekend. And the movie, in the movie, the father is so enamored with his daughter. He takes out a second mortgage on his house to send her to a college in New York. So she goes there. And she finds a way to sleep with his boss. Yeah? When she should be focusing on school. And then when the father finds out, he is so mad <laughs> that, you know, I think, what's the movie called? Something about a good man or something. <laughs> you know, I watched so many of them this week. I also watched one about Hope Springs with Meryl Streep and... Tommy Lee Jones. I didn't even know that Tommy Lee Jones could do any movie that's not a bad man thing, you know. But lessons. I love movies. I wish I was a movie maker because I love movies. Because in every movie, there's a message. There's something you can learn from that movie. Or have your children watch the movie and get taught something. In Hope Springs with Meryl and Tommy Lee, you learn that when you get older, you still need to be touched and hugged and have sex as elderly people. You can't have one person sleeping in the next room and you're in the next room and because they snore or they had a back injury, life ends. Because someone is feeling deprived and alone and lonely. So yes, they've managed to work them their way through their therapy and almost gave up on it. Is there anything in your life this morning that you're almost about to give up? Some of you are about to give up on your children because you think they're not doing what you want them to do. Don't do it. There's always hope. The rainbow is always going to come when there's rain and it settles. So keep hope alive in your lives and never ever give up, especially not on your children. And there's another one about kinky boots that I watched. Yeah, that one was also, there's a lesson in it all that you just never give up. You just keep persisting. Young man, father died, had a shoe company. He didn't want to have anything to do with the shoe company. His dad died suddenly and he had to take over the shoe company. His wife at the time, just couldn't deal with the shoe thing because she had another plan for her life. So he persisted with the failing shoe company until it became the big shoe company in Milan, no doubt. And then there was Kevin Costner's movie, For the Love of the Game. Never have people around you that's negative when you're trying to be the best that you can be. So I agreed with him in the movie when he dissed his girlfriend. 
and she left, but they found their way back because of determination and not giving up hope. But if you are trying to recover from something, an injury especially, as an athlete or otherwise, you need people around you that are positive. Not someone who's telling you, oh, your hand will never be better. You'll never play baseball again. No, you don't need that. Or you telling your child, oh, you're going to be no good. You're not going to pass that exam. No, you don't. You tell them they're smart enough, they're good enough, and they can do whatever they're trying to achieve. And say it without doubt, just like in Mark 11 when God is asking us to have faith in God. And when we pray, believe that we receive what we're asking for because then we'll have it. How many of us are praying but we're doubting? Mm, I'm not really going to get that. I don't think we're this kind of people. Remember that woman that won that big lottery the other day? She said she bought the ticket the night before and she said to her daughter, when her daughter asked her about winning, she said, those things don't happen to people like us. Oh my goodness. And see, I guess those words allowed God to show her that yes, these things can happen to people like you. So I don't know where you are on the NRA thing or on the limousine thing or on the burial thing, but I hope I'm giving you food for thought to think about all these things. And when you go back to church this weekend, I want you to look around and figure out who are the hypocrites among you that hate you. But if you do figure it out, just hold your head forward and press on to your seat and go for the reason that people should go to church is to worship. That's the reason we should go. So, I truly believe that God is in the business of hope, restoration, and rebuilding. And yes, it will never, ever, ever come in your timetable, but it will come. And remember the quote that I gave you last week from the God post-it notes that just tells you to continue dancing in the rain. Just continue to dance in the rain. Don't give up. So as we move to France and we see now that tens of thousands of protesters have rallied in the French capital of Paris, no doubt, to express their dissatisfaction with President François Hollande. <laughs> this they do ahead of his first anniversary in office since the election. The left-wing demonstrators, <laughs> wow. They accused President Hollande of abandoning socialism with his austerity policies. Hollande's approval rating has fallen to 25%. My God, he's really low. This, of course, is the biggest slump for any president in the past 50 years in France. Many people are angry about the weak economy and, of course, the soaring unemployment. Aren't we all worried about that <laughs> around the world? Left-wing former president candid presidential candidate Jean-Luc Mélenchon, he organized the protest. And he's accusing President Hollande of betraying his supporters. So the thing about Europeans, you see, is that they love to take to the streets to get their voices heard. But when our people tried to do this Wall Street demonstration thing, it kind of just died. <laughs> and people got arrested for things that they weren't even doing. Yeah? So, I don't know. How brave are we Americans? Are we willing to go up and stand on the street corner and hold up a placard for what we believe in or what we don't believe in? Are we willing, some of the people are willing to, are the Republicans willing? I, 
I think all the Republicans who hate B President Barack Obama from Mitch McConnell on down, I think they should just come on, give a press conference and said, look, American people, we hate the black man in the White House because he's black. And even things that he once passed that we agree with and want to pass, we're not going to pass it because we hate him. And just be honest with us and stop going around the bushes in the corners and wasting time and voting and all that kind of stuff when you know very well in your heart that you're not going to do this because you hate Barack Obama. I think Republicans should be brave enough to say that. And they should give a press conference like they love to do about everything else. They should actually come out and say it. Because this, the, 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 the rat is out of the bag by now because we heard last week from a Republican's mouth. They just didn't want to vote for the universal background check thing because they don't want the president to succeed. Now, who runs a business or a government on hate? Who does that? Is there any other country around the world that does this? We need to find out. So as we welcome you from around the world and in the United States, and thank you for joining us on this Diana Wright Show, we ask you to look around you, wherever you live, anywhere in the world. Is your government operating from the premise of hate instead of the premise of doing the American people? You know, they used to say it's the economy stupid. Well, I'm now saying it's the American people stupid. Hmm. Okay. Moving right along as we go to Mr. Kobe Bryant, who, of course... You know, he's from the Lakers and all that, the Los Angeles Lakers. <laughs> he's fighting his mother over some auction of his little things that he used to have. In court battle with his mother to try to keep his mother from auctioning off mementos from his high school days in Pennsylvania and his early NBA career. A southern New Jersey auction house is suing for the right to sell the stuff after the NBA star's lawyers wrote the firm to say it could not. <laughs> Imagine that. Bryant contends, that's Mr. Kobe now. He contends, don't forget that Kobe Bryant has a whole issue with his mother and the woman he married and they didn't want to go to the wedding because they didn't think that they were getting married for the right reasons. They were too young and whoops, where did he end up? In divorce and she took away most of his money. So you should listen to your mother, okay? Mothers do have some intuition that no one else has. Fathers don't have it. Mothers do. So Bryant contends that his mother, Pamela Bryant, does not have the right to sell the celebrities, the collectibles of the celebrity, including his <laughs> Lower Marion High School letters, a 2000 NBA championship ring, and hundreds of other items. Berlin, New Jersey based Goldwyn Auction says Bryant told his mother years ago that he did not want the items. Legal papers say Pamela Bryant intended to use the $450,000 advance that she got for the things to buy a new house. And when I read that, I thought to myself, okay, so Kobe's mother is trying to buy a house? Kobe didn't buy his mother a house? Mr. Kobe Bryant? Hmm. Anyone listening that knows you? Someone needs to slap some sense into you. You have all that money and your mother is struggling to go buy a house? Shame on you. Shame on you, Mr. Kobe Bryant. Your mother has to go buy her own house and you are making all that money and she's the one who placed you here out of her womb so you could play basketball? And do all the good things. And I'm sure she had some contribution to you even getting 
to be as talented as you are. What's wrong with our children nowadays? Look at Shaq, how well he takes care of his mother. Shame, shame, shame on you, Mr. Kobe Bryant. And if you said you didn't want the things, why is it that you all of a sudden want the things back? <laughs> Are you still a little kid in kindergarten or something? Wow. Okay. Here's something I thought was quite interesting and funny. Eat more pizza. An Italian research, now I said Italian research firm. I didn't say an American one because Italians are trying to protect the pizza. And you need to be eating the pizza, they say. So an Italian research firm found that people who indulged on the regular were far less likely to develop on the regular pizza now, the one with the tomatoes, which is the lycopene, they say. Esophageal cancer, colon cancer, and mouth cancer? Who knew that pizza could be so powerful? I can't wait to hear what Dax has to say about this. <laughs> well, so that means you need to just party and keep on eating them pizza. While the team was <laughs> aware that lycopene in pizza sauce was beneficial, they were shocked to discover that pizza is a complete meal offered so many, and we quote, pro protective powers. They're saying the pizza has protective powers. So if you love pizza, whoa, would my daughter like to hear this? Mm. The only thing that prevents this study from being the most awesome study in recent memory is that the scientists just had to point out that you shouldn't actually eat pizza on a regular basis because it's fatty. Mm. It has fatty stuff in it. Are you believing that? <coughs> or are you not? Mm. So, if you love your pizza, keep on eating pizza. Especially men who need that lycopene. And I guess women need it too because lycopene is good for a whole lot of stuff. But anything in moderation is okay. But I can't see... Are you going to be eating pizza every day because it has protective powers? <laughs> These studies... I like to bring them to you because I think... A lot of times they're kind of funny, but they give you pause and time to think because all the people on television are saying, don't eat this, it's too flowery and it's too that. And, and here we go. Pizza has protective powers. I guess it's a regular pizza just with cheese and or just with nothing. Just, you know, tomato sauce and a little cheese. Because once you add the pepperoni, and you add the meatballs, <laughs> and you add the chicken, and you add all of those other things, I don't know if it has protective powers. But I, I think this is a question I'd like to ask Dax on Wednesday. Well, we have Wellness Wednesday with Dax Dunn. And Dax, of course, is from Rad Wellness, and they specialize in the 21-day detox for weight loss. And not only for weight loss, but to cleanse your body of all the crap that's in it. Because I'm telling you, when I was on the 10-day detox, I was on it for 10 days. It's normally 21 days for most people. I'm telling you that some things I saw come out of my body, both here and there, I was amazed. So it's actually a good thing. And my husband and I was, were discussing yesterday the same thing Dax raised on the program last Wednesday about... Most of us who used to go to school when we were young and our grandparents, especially when you spent holidays with grandma, she'll be saying, time to get a washout now before you go back to school to get rid of all those worms. In America, they call it parasites. <laughs> In other countries, they call it worms because that's what it is. Yes, parasites. 
And it was not just the times that you went to her at summer. If you go to her for Easter holiday, every holiday that you had, you go to grandma, you're getting that washout. <laughs> and she's telling you how wonderful it is for your body to be cleansed before you go back to school. So I guess whether you're thin or you're fat or you're obese, a detox can be beneficial to your health. And if you watch a program called Food Hospital on the Food Network or Cooking Channel or whatever it is, you will come to realize that food can actually be your medicine that you need. I've seen them get people off of cholesterol medication, diabetic medication, just by diet, high blood pressure, that kind of thing. And some strange ones too that I never knew about. So you learn something. So my thing for you today is who are you willing to forgive? What are you hoping for? What are you hoping for restoration in your life or rebuilding in your life? I know what I'm hoping for. What are you finding in your box of blessings when you open it each and every morning? Are you choosing to live in the now and be happy and joyful and peaceful because you can? Are you choosing to love yourself because you must? Or are you choosing to go down the lane or the journey of sadness and hopelessness and giving up? Which road are you planning to travel? I hope you take the road that is positive, that's living in the now, that's giving you hope, love, joy, peace, happiness, abundant health, abundant wealth. I hope that's the journey that you choose to take each and every day as you wake up and you're not actually sick and lying in a hospital bed. And I promise you that you need to love yourself whether you're fat or you're skinny. I told you I used to wear size 13. Now I take a four and a six, depending on the designer. So it's all a struggle for each and every one of us. So whether you're big and fat or you think yourself obese and you're envying the person over there who seems skinny, we have the same demons and the struggles to keep our weight where we want it kept. Because people will look at you and say, oh, you don't look fat. But you know, when you sit down and you go like this, what are you feeling? That's the fat I want to get rid of. Especially when you have children. The fat right around your navel here. So it's up to the individual, just like it's up to the individual, by saying three little words, I love me. And on that note, I'm telling you I love me and I choose to go down the journey of positivity. I choose to live in the now and I choose to allow no one to steal my joy on a daily basis. And if I'm mad or if I'm pissed off with anyone, my mother, my husband, my daughter, my family members, business people, whomever it is, I'm going to let them know how I feel. And after I do, I'm done with it. I'm nice again. Yeah. My friends too. Same thing. But you can choose to go the journey with me. If you hate me after that, that's okay too. Because we're all entitled to our own opinions. But the one opinion I want you to have is the opinion about yourself. And the one journey I would like for you to take and remember the date of April 30th every year is I Love Me Day. Cherish that day. Embrace it. Love it up. If you will. And thank you again for joining me today. We shall do this again tomorrow morning at 1030. I'll bring you some more news. I have the most dangerous neighborhoods in the U.S. Ooh, I didn't want to go there this morning because I gave you a lot of bad stuff already. So I just hope and I pray that you can find peace, joy, happiness, and most of all, you can love yourself and then find some love after that. Have a great day. Stay prayed up and be blessed. And don't forget to like us on Facebook. And of course, if you're traveling, we wish you a safe journey back. And if you're not traveling, we wish you safety around the planet here where you are. Because see, a limousine ride just costed people their lives. Just like that. They're gone. Dressed up and ready to go in a limo to 
enjoy the moment so enjoy yourself right now love yourself right now not tomorrow not next week now that's on orders of me Diana Wright thank you for joining me today and if you love something set it free if it comes back it's yours if it doesn't it was never yours so ladies stop acting show your true colors when you go on a date men stop acting and church folks stop acting too the world will be a much better place so I love me how easy how about love L O V E love you all and thank you for joining me once again have a great day Mm-hmm.